to Live and Local here on Swindon 105.5 with me, Stu Jackson. Oh, and me, Sean Hodgson as well. Nearly caught me out. Well, you out. You didn't tell me you were going to introduce me again. I forgot my name. Well, and, uh, and of course, it, you were listening there in the first hour. We had um, Bill from Artsite, Bill Cox from Artsite, uh, in talking about uh, the wonderful work that they're doing. And in the second half of the show, we, we have more music, of course. We have the musical medley montage. We have clues. I'm thinking about I've had them. I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking hard. Can you same, get Cox tickets? Same with the mystery voice. Um, and we have an interview as well with Anna Friend and Cast from Tusk Tusk, um, Quirky Bird Theatre's current run in the competition scene. Uh, so all this yet to come. Uh, but let's go to a song now. Um, this is... The Doctor's Pond, um, who are uh, currently in the studio recording new material, so um, keep us informed as to what's going on there, guys, because uh, we do want to hear. Um, and yeah, so this is their song, The Doctor's Pond, by The Doctor's Pond. I see what they did there.
the facts are told And the rights to the movie have already been sold Yeah, we can't hide where we all come from Spawned in the slime very deep in the doctor's home Spawned in the stinking slime And there you go, that was the Doctor's Pond with the Doctor's Pond. Um, so yeah, currently in the studio recording new stuff, so we look forward to hearing that. Um, now, Sean, it'd be really nice if you have some clues for me, because I'm struggling this week. Well, what have you got so far then? Uh, so far I've got... Uh, I've got five, I think. Five points. Well, so no, I haven't. Well, I haven't really. I've got four. Already. I've got four, but I know sort of one of them is uh, sort of about something. <laughs> yeah, well, that, yeah, well, that, yeah, all songs are about something, aren't they? <laughs> next thing you say, it's, about, it's performed by a band or a singer next, aren't you? You're not going to get your points to say things like that. <laughs> ah, right. I might, right. Go, I might not have got okay. four. All right, all right. Let's <laughs> give some clues. Okay. Uh, clue for the first one. A clue for the song. It's, um, it's a phrase you might send to somebody when you're at the seaside. That's a clue for the song. And a clue for the artist uh, is a colour and that's linked to somebody, a cook that likes fish. So that's a clue for the artist. A cook that likes fish and uh, the clue for the song is a, sort of a phrase you might send to somebody if you were at the seaside. The second one is it's a cover, actually. It's a cover of a of a uh, traditional song, uh, and a clue for the artist. Uh, uh, let's say they were wild. They were wild. That's, that's a sort of clue for them. Uh, they were a wild group of people. Uh, clue for the third one. Form of transport. Clue for, is a song, and uh, a clue for the artist. A clue for the surname. He's not old. He's the opposite of old. And he's not a woman. So that's a clue for the. Uh, that's, that's a good one, isn't I it? I see where you're going with one. that. I see where you're right, going. One. Yeah, you can, you can hear the clock's ticking here, can't you? Clue for the fourth one. Um, uh, a despot might say this, or a dictator might say this, uh, for the clue for the song. And a clue for the artist is. Uh, originally they were five, and then they were four. And then they split up, and then they were four again, and then they were five for a very short period of time, and then back to four <laughs> again, and now there's only three of them on tour. Okay. So they were a boy band. Okay. So I describe that's that's and that's not that, that's what works out. That's their history in terms of numbers in the band. So originally five, then four, then split up, back to four, uh, then five for a very short period, back to four again, and now there's only three. Clue for the last one, uh, the artist was in a, should we say, proto-punk band from the uh, uh, very late 60s, early 70s. Oh yeah, that really helps me, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, he does, he does. <laughs> uh, uh, and then his career, his career got a big boost again when he did some work with David Bowie in the early 70s. And the song was this song you're listening to was very extensively used in a uh, theme tune to a film uh, to do with drugs that included somebody disappearing down a toilet. So uh, that's, uh, that's your clues. Oh, those have helped you no end, haven't they, Stu? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I have to <laughs> answer that? Maybe not. Let's, li let's listen to them again, see, see if it does indeed help.
Yeah, so there we are. That sort of helps me a little bit, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, you're sure about that? Uh, are you no, just saying that just to, just to say words? I don't know. Until I actually <laughs> hear the answers, how am I, how am I supposed to know? Well, what about the clue from, from the boy band? That, you must have at least got me. The, I, there are, I know there are so many boy bands that you like. I wrote down one particular boy band, um, and I'm absolutely 100%. So I will check with you before I say it out on air. No, no, no. no, no so no, it wasn't no, the Jacksons no, then. No, right. No. Okay. No, 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 they, no, they were a boy band before boy bands were named boy bands. Oh, well, yeah, but that was still a boy band. Well, I suppose technically they were, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll go with that. But it's the wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> it's not the Jacksons, everybody. That's what Stu's got. Okay. Now, you yeah. say that because you can give your name mentioned, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how time's going to get my name mentioned yeah, on the radio? Yeah, you know how much you enjoy yourself promotion. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Well, someone who definitely is not a boy band, um, I'm saying that. Uh, I'm assuming he's not a boy band. Um, he might get upset by that now. I oh, I hope not. No, oh, no, no, he won't, he won't get upset by that now. Oh, he's, um, beyond, he's beyond that now, I think. Mr. Yeah. Love and Justice, um, Steve Cox, who's yeah. playing Unplugged at the Roaring Donkey on Wednesday the 6th. Um, so let's go for one of his tracks now. Um, oh, this is a nice one. This is The Road. So evocative, it just reminds you of summer for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, atmospheric. Yeah, very. I can yeah. see myself in the car, which I do, just driving off into the middle of Wales and disappearing and just uh, 
say I sometimes do, just disappear for a week and just hide away and I can imagine just listening to that and listening to that. I love that song. But who do the show? Uh, 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 you'd leave me on my own. You, you would rise to the occasion. You'd, you'd you, never leave me on my own. You can talk for England, show. mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and who do the clues? Ah, well, that's, uh, that, would, that would be a challenge, wouldn't it? That would be a challenge. Speaking of which, um, let's hear again this week's mystery voice and, uh, and then see if we can we get a clue, clue out of you. You want me to well, get a clue? Let, you... Let's hear it again okay, first right. and then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come up with a clue. It's funny, in the 1980s, we used to have these parties where you dress up in 70s clothes and think they look ridiculous. But now I actually think they look rather cool. Yeah, so now they look rather cool. Uh, the clue is uh, one of the characters this person plays uh, pinches a line or just a, a word from an ABBA song. Uh, and he uses that extensively as the catchphrase for one of his characters. Mm. I'm not going to say what the catchphrase is, it's going to be then too obvious. No, there. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's see if that helps anybody. Um, so let's hear it again. It's funny, in the 1980s, we used to have these parties where you dress up in 70s clothes and think they look ridiculous, but now I actually think they look rather cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm confident I know who that is, uh, but we'll find out later in the show when, when we get the answers. Uh, that's when it gets confirmed. So, now I'm just waffling away because we've got another piece of music coming up and I'm trying to find the notes, um, but here we are. Oh yes, now coming to uh, Brewery Blues in Sirencester on the 13th of May, um, you've got some, some fantastic bands coming that day, uh, one of them is uh, Ben Max is coming, uh, so let's go to uh, one of Ben's songs now, this is New York. It's just like a film of my own I feel so far from home To stare from my reflection Seems like it's always been Black and white, black and blue But this feels new
was, uh, that was uh, Ben Maggs, who's uh, coming to play uh, Brewery Blues, uh, Siren Session on the 13th of May, and a track of his called New York. And uh, Ben, if you've got any more music, do send it to us. I think we play, we play that track a few times. You do can play the general area, so we'd love to play a bit more music of yours, actually. Um, now, the other day, uh, Stu went over to see uh, a new production. Oh, well, it's not a new production, because it's uh, by Anna Friend's Quirky Bird Theatre Company who recently uh, won the Harold Jolliffe One Act competition. Play Festival. Play Festival, <laughs> therefore, which got them through to the next round, which is the uh, part of the All England Theatre Festival. Uh, and in the Western area, they, they uh, uh, the, the second round. So Stu went over to see them, to see the production, managed to have a word with Anna Friend, the director, and also to the cast, uh, Josh and Rosie. So here's our interview now. So I'm here at Bouvier Hall in Pusey, um, having just seen the afternoon shows uh, for the second round of the, of the competition. So I'm here with cast members, um, Josh and Rosie from Quirky Birds Tuss Tuss. So first of all, very, very well done, guys. Um, but OK, tell people very, very quickly what roles you play. Josh, first of all. OK, so I play Elliot. He's the oldest of the three siblings. Um, and he's basically got this paternal role and he's kind of in charge and he's he's basically trying to keep... He's, he's the optimist of the family, so he's he's the one, like, saying, we can do this and um, if we all sit together, we'll be fine. We, we can get food and I want to be in charge of the money, obviously. Frivolous attempts at being in charge of the money. <laughs> but, yeah, that's basically my role in the family. Fantastic. And Rosie? Um, I play Maggie. She's the second oldest. Um, she's the pessimist, definitely. She tries to think about everything logically, um, doesn't expect things to go well. I think we have quite a competitive relationship yeah. as well. I think that's why it works so well. Yeah. Your, your, your relationship on stage yeah. really did seem really well developed. Yeah. Um, is that, I mean, have you worked together before? Or uh, is... No, this is actually the first time we've met. We did a, a, a week performance in Bristol at the Alma Tavern Theatre. Right, so yes. then afterwards you decided to let's enter the absolutely, competition. Absolutely. It's worked out well for us. So, yeah. so how, long, how long have you been rehearsing and preparing in total? We then? had... Yeah, I think months, so. I we think. did one rehearsal per scene, yeah. and there's eight scenes in the play in total. So it's quite a short rehearsal. Eight rehearsal yeah. sessions, I guess. Yeah. Right. So it's been quite short. And and the play, of course, deals with some very adult themes yeah. for such a, a, a youthful cat. And yeah. a, I hated being called young when I was <laughs> young. But, but yes, but, <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, but I mean, and to be fair, you know, watching it, you, you, you both gave very, very mature performances. Thank you. Um, for your age, I, I think the, the adjudicator. Yeah. Said along the same yeah. line, yeah. really stood out. Can I, for the record, you don't have to answer this if you don't want, but how old are you? I'm 17. Right? I'm 17 also. So you're both 17, both 17. but yeah. you're playing 15, 15 and 14. And 14. Yeah. Right, okay, which was totally believable as well. Thank you. Good. Hold, on, hold on to that. <laughs> that's, the <end>. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you very, very much, Thank you. Uh, Josh Thank and you. Rose. And, and of course, good luck with the uh, decision making tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so. Um, and a friend, director of Tuss Tuss. Hi, from Stu, Quirky how Bird. are you? Hello, Anna. Good, Hello. thank you. Now, very, very well done on Tuss Tuss. Thank um, you. Brilliantly performed there, and of course, talking to Josh and Rosie just now as well. Very mature performances from, from such a young cast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you've worked very closely with them on this. Yeah. Um, and Tuss Tuss itself, uh, very mature themes. It, what, what drew you to the play in the first place? Um, well, I've worked with Polly Stone's work uh, material quite a lot, actually. Um, I've sort of picked up her plays, and I think they pretty much leap from the page for me in terms of wanting to work with young actors, but not necessarily going down the, I suppose, uh, more traditional youth theatre. Yeah. Um, I, they're so well crafted. There is so many layers to them, and the dialogue is really pacey without being overwhelming. Um, the characters are really well drawn. So for me, it was an opportunity to really challenge some young actors to produce something that had real meaning on stage, that wasn't one-dimensional, two-dimensional, which is often the way youth theatre goes, but actually really try and get their teeth into a naturalistic piece and a naturalistic process. Mm, well, certainly as an audience member, you, you very much got the feeling, although it was written for younger actors, 
that you didn't feel it was youth theatre you were watching. So. Exactly, I think the distinction is that it's just theatre with young people as opposed to being youth theatre. And youth theatre sometimes has such a bad rep and people are shy away from it, really, but actually, at the end of the day, it's just theatre performed by young actors and sometimes it's outstanding. Absolutely. Well, certainly an outstanding job that was done. Um, so... Good luck with tonight. Thank you, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll be following progress. Thank you very so, much. So, an, any plans to take to, to scouting away? You... Well, we've already done a run at the Alma in Bristol, which is very successful. We had a nice four-star review from Stage Talk magazine, which was brilliant. So that kind of kicked off our sales. And we are going to do a one-off in Swindon. What we found at HJ, um, the Harold Jolliffe in Swindon, is that there are a lot of people in the interval asking, what happens next? What happens in Act 2? And really wanting <laughs> to know what goes on in the next bit. So we're kind of off the back of that and just a very a large wave of interest in the work itself I made the decision I made the call that we would do a one-off performance in Swindon on the 30th of June at the Swindon Arts Centre so that's now here, booked and in place and tickets information will go out shortly so um, that oh, will be brilliant. pretty much the last opportunity to do uh, to, to see this particular performance um, and then I'm looking forward in September to carrying on my uh, Polly Stenham season so I'll be auditioning for her next play that face and then taking that on tour from September onwards so you know she's a she's a playwright that I absolutely love and um, we were very fortunate because she wrote to us today and gave us her support which oh, was wonderful, amazing wonderful. and um, so yeah we'll be getting our teeth into that one um, oh, pretty shortly brilliant we'll keep us posted yeah we will um, I'll come in fantastic Badger you. thank you very very much <laughs> all right take all care, right, take care. bye bye yeah, so that was the wonderful Quirky Bird Theatre um, just after their performance of Tusk Tusk. Uh, and of course, that evening all the judging was done, the adjudicator gave his decisions, um, and Tusk Tusk got through to the next round, which is very, very exciting. Well, they're on a roll then, aren't they? They are, absolutely. Yeah. So they've, they've stormed the first two rounds, um, they're now through to the, uh, the regional semi final. Um, if I get that right, of the All England Theatre Festival. Um, and that's going to be, oh, again, not that far for us from here, which is, which is nice. Um, but that's going to be on the 7th of May at the Merlin Theatre in Froome. Now, where, where does it go from there then? What, what, uh, nationally, where does it all end up? Then it goes to the, uh, yeah, the national one. Where the national one takes place, I don't know. Um, we, we'd find out. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. To that. yeah, but yeah I, I know I'll be going to Froome to uh, to support Anna, and and not just um, of course not just Quirky Bird, but it's also worth mentioning that at the Harold Jolliffe, uh, which was the first round, of course, um, the Latchley players uh, won runners up. Oh, that's good then. Um, yeah. And so they got through to Pusey as well. And they were there. Um, and they again won runners up, so they're going to prove as well. Do you know how big the western area is? What, what, what's that region? I mean, west of England, from here down to Cornwall or something. It's, or? yeah, it's it's. Um, I think oh, now if I get uh, if I get this wrong, I do apologise, but I think it's roughly sort of Oxford west, okay. um, Midlands, sort of Birmingham south. All of that area. The, the Western area is a huge, huge area. Well, that's a good result then, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so, done to, well done to Andrew and well done to the, to the whole cast there. That's brilliant news. Indeed, indeed. And of course to the Lech Lake players. I mean, yes. let, let's not, it, it's, it's going to be so easy to overlook them. <laughs> but uh, but no, their, their performance, uh, again, that I also saw of um, Chekhov's a proposal. Very, very well done, really well performed. Uh, so yeah, congratulations to both. Now, let's go again. Another bit of music now. Um, this time from Don Gallardo. We play quite a lot of Don Gallardo here, don't we? Well, he's on tour coming over from uh, Nashville, so uh, it's always nice to get a, a national, an international uh, sort of touring artist come and play in a little old Swindon. Uh, which is great news, and he's come to play the Beehive on. What, what's the date of the Beehive? It's in a couple of weeks' time, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, uh, the 8th of May. 8th of May. 8th yeah. yeah. of May. So, uh, they, well, they do have quite a few international uh, uh, artists come to come to play there, so that'd be great, great to see them. Uh, and say, so, and here's a track of his. This is called uh, One of These Days from Don Gallardo. <laughs> I've been waiting on a plane Come 
Coming into Memphis All the way from Virginia If you want it Then we'll give it to you I'm tired of spending my days Talking about tomorrow Learning songs I don't care to play If you want it And we'll give it to you We've been working hard For all of these years Wondering why we can't sleep at night There is music in our ears Something's gotta give Yes, something's got see him um, in the Beehive on the 8th of May, all the way from Nashville. Uh, now let's go to another song now, this one uh, again, we mentioned the Brewery Blues in Sirencester earlier with Ben Max playing there, um, but Emmy McDade, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Emmy McDade yeah. uh, will also be playing, uh, so let's hear this song from Emmy, this is Through My Eyes. Yeah. 
doesn't know, he doesn't care There's no way he'll understand So hold her in your arms And I'll understand very nice that was Emmy McDade there um, who will be playing the Brewery Blues on the 13th of May uh, you were just saying she doesn't come down this way I don't very think often she comes over to play uh, I think she's from Cheltenham or Gloucester way and I know she's played uh, Siren Sester a few times and that's about the closest she's got to Swindon, I think. Oh, so um, right. uh, I'm saying she's just in our catchment area. But if she, it's the only song again I've got of hers. We played that a few times in the past. But again, Emmy, if you've got any more, we'd love to hear from you. Well, we'll have to see if we can get her in on session and yeah, install yeah. the virtues of Swindon to her. And once one she sees the international airport, of course, she'll be sold, won't she? <laughs> say no more. Say no more. <laughs> uh, yeah. You say that to me a lot. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, it's a cracking place. It's one, it's, it's, it's one, it's one of Wiltshire's secrets, isn't it? We love, we love Swindon. Yes. Genuinely, yes. genuinely, you're yeah, laughing. We will be here otherwise. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, it's time to start hearing some answers. So uh, before we hear the answers for the medley, let's hear it one last time. this week's music medley montage uh, so you're gonna put us out of our misery then Sean uh, we got Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd not Rick Stein then oh, no <laughs> yes I Fish think, Cook yeah, I, saying, yeah, I think in Floyd Floyd, uh, Floyd on Fish Floyd on Fish yeah, yeah of course so uh, House of the Rising Sun yes. by The Animals yes. Cars Gary Newman yep. not Old Woman <laughs> um, Rule the World, that was by Take That. You say that's from a film, so it's, Star uh, is it, it's, it's in Starlight. Stardust. Star Stardust. 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 Okay, yes, right. yes. That's not the Debbie Desix one, is it? Uh, I don't know which one that is. Debbie Desix must be right? before my time. Oh, it was a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> it was a long time. Uh, and then we ended up with Lust for Life by Iggy Pop. Uh, what's the clue of the film I was making reference to there? Oh, that was, uh, oh, oh, crikey. Choo-choo, choo-choo. Yeah, the train spotting, of train course. Train spotting, yeah. Of course. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, there's your the songs, there's the artist. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, from House of the Rising Sun to Rolling in the Sun, uh, which is a track, when I can find the right notes, from the King in Mirrors, um, who are playing uh, the Songs of Praise 10th anniversary at the Vic on the 2nd of June. So that was a nice little segue, wasn't it? House of the Rising Sun to Rolling in the Sun. <laughs> okay.
time quite quickly here um, so it's time to hear again this week's mystery voice before we hear the answer it's funny, in the 1980s, we used to have these parties where you dress up in 70s clothes and think they look ridiculous, but now I think they look rather cool now I think I know who this is well, I think the thing is, 80s, 70s clothes never look cool so I have to disagree with him on that, I'm sorry to say <laughs> uh, but that is aha! Alan Partridge Alan himself Partridge. Let's see Steve Coogan just to be sure, well, we, we, we're sure, we, yeah, we, we know. know. But let's see what we get just for fun. It's funny, in the 1980s, we used to have these parties where you dress up in 70s clothes and think they look ridiculous, but now I think they look rather cool. So, yeah, that was definitely uh, Alan Partridge, you Mr Steve Coogan to give him his proper name. Um, now, we're just going to go to another track now. Uh, this one is Beggars from uh, Billy in the Low Ground who are playing the locomotive on the 13th of May. So this track, Beggars. <laughs>
taking, you're taking too long. You're taking, you're taking too long. You're taking, you're taking too long. You're taking, you're taking too long. Yeah, that was Beggars uh, by Billy in the Low Ground. Um, well, that's all we've got time for from us for this week. So it's goodbye from me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not falling for that one. <laughs> no, indeed not. <laughs> uh, but do join us again next week um, where we'll have more of the same but, uh, but different. Yeah. Now to take us to the news, here's a bit of some northern band nobody's heard of. <laughs>